Hi, this is TLC. And this is Pizza Wolf. And you're listening to the second season of Hungry for More. The internet's favorite podcast about feudism by the community. And for the community. This episode is called Coming Out of the Fridge. Ooh, nice title. <laughs> So a few days ago, I found this one post or I came across this one post on one of our mm -hmm. uh, social sites that kind of hit a nerve with me. So, oh yeah, yep. I'll just read you a few sentences and then we'll talk about it because I decided to host this episode today about this one topic. This person said, I do not have to be public about liking fat girls or being a feeder if I don't want to. It is my choice. Me exercising my choice does not harm anyone else in the slightest. The fact is, if I'm open about these things, people will be cunts to me and judge me and ostracize me. I am not a bad person for not wanting that, nor am I complicit in it. And if you think I am, you can go fuck yourself. It isn't my fault. If you want me to come out, then you or someone else can change society so it won't be a dick to me for doing so. And please, let's cut this fucking nonsense and any of this makes me a coward or lacking in courage. It doesn't. But what does is the disrespect or ostracism from this very community for myself and others taking this position and the willingness people have to conflate people like me with fuckboys, harassers, self-hating vanilla fats and people actually doing harm. How dare you tar me with that same brush? Finally good to hear from the real victims here. <laughs> yeah, I'm so oh, sorry. Boy. That, that was a piece of work. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the episode that I decided to like kind of present this week, because today is going to be one of those episodes that I'm going to present, next week's episode is going to be yours, Pizza Wolf. This one's going to be about, as we said, coming out of the fridge, meaning telling someone in your life, whether it's a friend or your significant other, or maybe even a family member, if it's necessary, about your preference or your kink. I've actually talked about me being an FA and even a female feeder with some of my friends. I've um, talk to some of my family just about being an FA without, of course, using the terminology, but just like, hey, I'm into big dudes, relax about it. I've, I've had those conversations. I've had it with my partners, with friends, and with like my mom, which was kind of awkward, but necessary. So um, okay. I just thought a lot of people ask, like, how do I do it? Because especially when it comes to someone you're dating, it gets harder to kind of ignore the issue. So... Um, We thought we put together like a little advice thing on how you could do it, maybe why you should, how you shouldn't, all these kinds of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think you're probably pretty uniquely qualified to talk about this. You are, I mean, beyond beyond the people who you've just described to, you've also spoken to uh, international publications <laughs> and uh, in a series, you're probably uh, the most the which... most publicly out, uh, <laughs> you know, fetus in the world, but. Stop um, you it! Know, you're making me cringe. No, 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 no. In, in the in the best way possible. In the best way possible. I think uh, I think we almost universally agree that if we have to have a spokesperson um, in, in any any shape of the the phrase, we're glad it's you. No. Um, <laughs> never, nevertheless. Okay. Nevertheless. Moving on. Start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> So as we've kind of already mentioned, we're calling this episode coming out of the fridge. We're not in any way trying to put coming out about your preference on the same level as coming out if you're gay or bi or trans or something like that. It's not the same thing. It's nowhere near the same thing. And we get that. It's just a silly little pun that we do. Yeah, and as, as far as we can tell, no one's ever, you know, suffered some horrible violence as a result of being, uh, you know, preferring larger partners um, or being a fetus. So, you know, we don't, we don't. Beyond the pun, we don't intend to draw any uh, similarity uh, there, and we certainly don't think that it's uh, it's anywhere as difficult as uh, as you know coming out with a non heteronormative sexuality. Uh, in fact, it's very very easy, and we're going to show you how to do it all within a thirty minute podcast. Oh gosh, <laughs> the pressure's on. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, just that, that's that's the disclaimer. But now we can get on to the meat of the issue. Why do it? Why do it? He 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 begs the question. He says. Mm. It's my preference. It's my kink. I don't need to share it with anyone. Why? Why are you arguing that compared to something like BDSM, which is another, you know, another thing on the kink spectrum? <laughs> yeah. I'd say no one's no one's saying that those people have to share their kinks. Why? Mm -hmm. Why should? Uh, why should people who are into larger partners or people who are into fetism um, be public about that? 
because that argument always comes from like almost exclusively, I see this from people who are skinny or average sized. Most mm -hmm. of the times, let's be honest, they're FAs or skinny feeders. You can only hide if you're skinny or average sized because fat people can't hide that they're fat. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna date someone who's actually gonna be a bigger person and you've pretended your entire life that you're just as much into like the, like the average skinny, like conventionally attractive people, and suddenly you date someone who's bigger, then people around you are going to react because it goes against what they think you're into to some extent. Because unfortunately, the default is that if you don't say anything, you're just going to be into the conventional random stuff and letting them in on like at least some of your thoughts, even if you're just about like vague topics about like beauty or fat discrimination can get you to a point where when you actually start for example, gaining weight or bringing home someone who's fat or someone who's going to become fatter, it'll make sense for your friends. And you don't want all the backlash that might happen like the first time they, they have to like process, wait, skinny is not the only like thing you can achieve in your life. That moment that they will have that will broaden their horizon about, no, wait, let's just relax about this. And there are some people who are going to be into this and there are some people who are going to be into chubby people or fat people, you don't want this to happen when you're actually bringing someone into your life that you want to be your partner, for example. So if you want to kind of cross this border from hiding on the internet and secretly fapping to like fat people to actually dating someone, bringing someone into your life, sharing your friends and your family with that person, then you don't want them to suffer that backlash that they're going to get. Because like nobody's expecting you to change the whole society. But I do think it's important to at least communicate your boundaries with your friends. And we're not saying that you should go and like tell them like, every kinky little detail that you're doing bad, but maybe just don't be a shitty person. So it seems, I mean, it seems like it, there's, there's a, a, a two-pronged reason why you're, you're teasing out here. On one hand, you know, don't be a shitty person and continue to contribute to a culture which, mm -hmm. you know, marginalizes and oppresses people who, you know, you've you acknowledge at least to yourself that you have an interest in, yeah. um, you know, as, as a partner, but then also kind of, it seems like you're, you're, you're telling people that if you ever do start dating one of these people, if you haven't worked to dismantle some of those assumptions and some of those prejudices in your personal life, you might find, you know, them right at the forefront to, to, confront your, your prospective partner. Um, you know, if yep. you haven't created within your own life, a culture that, you know, that affirms the, the positivity of fat bodies, you know, and, and you're, you know, you talk to, to, to the outside world, you just seem to be, you know, you don't call out fat phobic comments and mm -hmm. you don't um, publicly like acknowledge the sexual agency of fat people, you know, in, in media depictions or something. You know, then then you might get not only confusion but hostility if you if you ever do bring a fat person home. So it seems like there's a not only just a don't be a shitty person reason, yeah. but there's a personal benefit for someone too, right? I do think so, and um, I've had this experience just when I told friends or family that they're not always gonna understand. Like I've I've been lucky enough that nobody's like been extremely shitty to me. But people generally do need some kind of, let's call it acclimation time to just kind of no, get no, no, used to the yeah, idea. If you just want to be very, very cynical and egotistical about it, um, to prevent stuff like, for example, unsolicited diet advice. I don't want, when I'm dating a FED or a bigger person, to have like half of my family just assume that he's going to need all this unsolicited diet advice sure. or stuff yeah, like you're, that you're now you're now responsible for him losing weight Absolutely. exactly stuff like yeah. that or or people assuming that i'm settling for someone just because they're bigger because people have this they have this default like hierarchy in their mind about fat people yeah. being well, tlc's tlc's so pretty why doesn't she go for someone you know skinnier she could she could do so much better you know uh, yeah sure yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. sure you, i'm sure you've heard it i'm sure you've heard it uh <sighs> For anyone not listening on YouTube, we do have a YouTube channel. And on this YouTube channel, I made a previous Q&A before we actually started the podcast with a friend of mine who's a gamer. We made a Q&A on like sex positive stuff and body positive stuff. And I have a little clip in there and just 
if anyone wants to check it out, feel free to do so. I basically shared a story of how I told my mom because it was exactly the reason that you just stated. She was just constantly assuming that I'm settling for someone that wasn't as skinny as me. And to her, that meant the same thing as desirable. And it reached a point where I just had to sit her down. I didn't tell her I'm an FA or I'm a feeder in the sense of all this terminology thing. I didn't sit her down and say, look, I have this horrible secret I need to share with you. No, I had to sit her down and just say, you need to relax about this because I think bigger dudes are ridiculously cute. And if I'm dating one of those guys, then that's not settling. That's me getting exactly what I want. And if I'd be dating just a random skinny guy, just because society thinks that's the most desirable option to go for, that would be settling because it wouldn't be acknowledging what I'm actually into. And and now she gets it. Now she understands it. And it's made a huge difference in my life. And the same goes for any friend I've ever shared it with. To me, being into bigger people is not just, okay, this is who I like to fuck, to put it bluntly. It's, it's also about what I think about beauty standards, what I think about discrimination of fat people, what I think about health stuff, how I feel about uh, food, how I feel about all these kinds of different things. And I feel like if if I just pretend that I'm just into your random like six pack apps kind of guy and I have to hide that I'm into bigger people, I also feel that I have to hide all this other kind of stuff because otherwise it just doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? It feels very idealistic, but I feel like I'm not true to myself and who I am. It's hard to say that you're going to you're going to be a fat ally and you're going to be concerned with all these, you know, notions of equitable representation or notions of you know, uh, fat phobia depictions, you know, if you're, if you're willing to conceal your own preference, it's, it's hard to, you know, and there's, and uh, while, while certainly not, com- not comparable to the, to the psychic devastation mm. uh, that fat people face, yeah. you know, there is a weight of, of keeping all that, at, that inside, you know, it's not, definitely, yeah. it's, not a, it's not a pleasant thing to do. So do it for yourself, you know? I also think we've all seen those kinds of people around in the fetism community who you know have repressed this their whole life and are just mm-hmm. ridiculously desperate and aggressive and cringeworthy online. People who repress all this kind of stuff are those who will struggle the most. And I don't want it for anyone. I, I do think it's it can help you grow so much as a person if you're... Uh-huh. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Every little word in this king has to be a pun, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, just, that's our way. That's our way. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I, th- I, think, I think your point's really well taken. If you, if you bottle that part of yourself up, especially when for so many of us, that part is an integral part, integral part to, um, you know, to who we were and how we developed our sexuality and kind of our way of, you know, just approaching sexual expression generally. Yeah. But if we, if we repress it, it's going to stunt our our development in one way mm-hmm. or another. So yeah, yeah, I think that's a that's a super important way to approach it too. Well, you've made the case. You made the case Ex- for why <laughs> why do it. And now now exactly. you have. I'm sure you have a bunch of our listeners sitting on the edge of their seats or in their I don't know on the train or <laughs> wherever the bathtub wherever people choose to listen to this podcast. Hitting um, the gas pedal, a lot of excitement. No, please don't. If you're no, driving, no, no, don't. No, please don't. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> Furiously yeah. masturbating. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no, please don't tell us if you're doing that. Uh, but now I'm sure you have people asking the question, okay, so I know, I understand why yeah. um, it's not only the decent thing to do and, you know, the not being a piece of shit thing to do. There's also real tangible, measurable benefits for me in telling people about my preference or my kink. So how do I do it? We're not expecting anyone to have this kind of intervention kind of talk where you sit everyone down and you have to go into every single detail that you do sure, yeah. about how you tie your boyfriend up and funnel feed him or stuff like that. No, at least my advice would be tell them as much as you need to tell them to create an environment where you can in the future live out your kink to the extent that you want to. Take into account what they've shared with you. And I think if someone shares a certain amount of intimacy with you, then I think it's okay to share an equal amount of your personal thing. Just like take it step by step. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, so that, so I, I think your point's really well taken. I think that a lot of people who, and honestly, I think it's, it's kind of a red herring that people use as an excuse, you know, Oh, I don't want to dump all this fetish stuff on people. Like, 
I don't think that any kinkster who's told other people about it really expects anyone to to do all that. I think we're much more along the lines of you share what you need to in order to not kind of compromise your own values with yeah. people. Um, I think that's a very good way to put it. Yeah. And and then and then not necessarily more unless you have that type of friendship with someone mm-hmm. exactly. um, or relationship where casually talking about your kinks <laughs> is something that you do. Yeah. Um, and for some, for some of us that'll be the case. But yeah, I, I I think the I think it's definitely true. When it comes to telling someone you're actually interested in dating, you're gonna notice you already made a huge progress if you're already open to your friends. Because most people are not just gonna randomly start dating strangers. <laughs> Most of us still, even with, we, even in the age of like online dating and all this kind of stuff, uh, we do tend to first get to know the person and maybe even become friends before we actually start dating them. So if you've already been open about liking bigger people, then like your partner is not going to be surprised that you're into this kind of stuff. Okay, there's more than they might have thought behind all this, but it's still going to be in line with who they think you are, and it's not going to be very disruptive. My advice would be, the first time you tell them, don't, don't use terminology because it puts people off. It, it makes, first of all, you're putting ideas into their head that might not be in line with what you're actually into. We all, we all know how diverse fe- even, even just feedism can be. Some people are going to be into being a dominant feeder who wants to pet play with their feedy and, and humiliate them and tease them and do all this kinds of stuff. Someone else wants to be this submissive servant who loves to be squashed by fat women. Like There's so many different roles and aspects and different niches and interests that if you're going to just tell someone, hey, I'm a feeder or hey, I'm a feedy, you're actually not telling them that much about yourself. You're actually just going to put ideas into their head that they might have either picked up from the media or they're going to pick it up the first time they will then Google the, those terms. I think it's so much easier if you just tell them what you're actually into and why, like from your personal point. It seems like, you know, what I'm, what I'm hearing is some might be harder than others. Now, it, 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 I can see it kind of being flattering for having a, uh, you know, a thin female feeder talk about how much you like size contrast and oh, what a, what a big, imposing, strong, you know, burly guy you are, and how you know how your average guy could still find mm-hmm. things that sort of uh, keyed into traditional masculine notions and like, and that's probably a little bit easier than you know saying you're into vor or uh mpreg or yeah. you know, so some of the i mean some of the things yeah. that are, aren't necessarily fetism related but i you know, I, I, I agree yeah of, it's it's like the old the old um say how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time if it comes out of nowhere i think one of the reasons that people have this huge mental block for how am I going to have this conversation with my partner is because they haven't done the groundwork of first, you know, normalizing fat sexuality and Mm. affirming fat bodies and combating fat phobia and, you know, just comporting themselves in their day-to-day life in ways that kind of create the space for the kink to make sense um, to a partner. I think most of us want to get to a place where, our partner doesn't just know about it, but where we can actually have a sex life that will fulfill both of us, meaning that also some of my kinks might be involved. Understanding mm-hmm. also that some of his kinks or her kinks or their kink or whatever might be involved because I think it's always a two-way street. And I've rarely ever met a person who didn't have a kink. I think also being kinksters ourselves, we are drawn to other people who have some kind of not yeah. the most normative sex life there is out there. Kink understands kink. We are automatically drawn to people that are a little bit more alternative when it comes to that. And I think that's going to help a lot. And I think if you do a good enough job in, in understanding what small and easy ways could be to, to maybe start trying out some of this stuff, there's going to be different, for example. We all know how romanticized the small food play stuff can be in bed, like the strawberries and whipped cream and that kind of stuff. Nobody's really going to bet their eyelid if someone tells them, let's just play around with some whipped cream in bed. I don't think anyone is going to be 
incredibly shocked by that. Not at all. We have we're you know we're lucky. We have a ton of kind of gateway drugs, I guess, <laughs> to uh, yeah, you know, to deeper fetus. And then you oh. know, if 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 it as long as you know there are no alarms going off, yeah, um, you know, you can tell your partner the next day, wow, you know, that was a real turn on. And and you know, t- and take it from there. I I think your point's really well taken though about kind of having to be willing in part when you share something as as deeply personal as this, um, you know, in, in the context of a relationship, to be willing to like listen because who knows they you know they they mm. they could very well be kinky too. And I'll tell you from personal experience, um, <laughs> you know, when I found when I found partners who had kinks, um, I was thrilled because it was e- you know for me it was easy <laughs> mode. And forgive me from getting up, getting up on my male soapbox here, but you know, oh, the 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 infinite mysteries of womankind, and how can I, you know, no, it's it's diff- it's difficult when you date someone mm-hmm. and you just have no idea what does it for them, and yeah. you know, you know, I you, you stalk their Pinterest, you look at their, you know, you, you try desperately to find something that's gonna okay, work pizza well. Wolf? So find a, pizza wolf, yeah, go ahead. Nobody's sharing their kink on Pinterest, believe me. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's where you're wrong. Go young find lady. their Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, their Tumblr too. But no, you know, it's you 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 desperately look a lot of times for things you know that feel good for them and make them happy and turn them on. Yeah. When someone tells you I'm kinky and gives you an idea of what they're into, yeah. you know, as long as you know, as long as they're not electrifying your genitals, that's just my case. Maybe you like electrifying your genitals <laughs> if you do Mazel Tov. You know, go do it with my blessing. But as long mm-hmm. as it's you know. As as long as it's within the realm of possibility for something, I can find a way to get into it if it turns my partner on. Yeah. Oh my God, what a weight off my shoulders it is. So yeah. I I would I would say that another reason, um, or another why, but also kind of a a a, a, a how is you know you tell them in the context of hoping to find out what they're into because mm-hmm. it's really I mean it's just really really helpful to get that roadmap of, of things that turn your partner on. Yeah. Cause then you can, I mean, then you can explore together and exactly, it's, it's yeah. you know, it, it's a lot more fun that way. But I would say that you should also, um, when you are starting to share things and give them names, um, you know, be aware that, that you might want to do some damage control too. Yeah. Because if you, if you, you know, if I know if my partner told me that they were into a kink that I didn't know anything about, um, when I got off the phone with them or when they left or when, you know, whenever I had them with them, I'd Google it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, if you Google feeder, I just did first, first results you get just putting in feeder, um, are for the Welsh rock band feeder. They had that <laughs> one hit back in the nineties. Um, it was a good one. Yeah. But the first, so the first one we actually have before that is, um, an urban dictionary, which, you know, lists oh, as the top mm-hmm. American Google result, usually a male who likes to encourage weight gain in his partner through the consumption of food. Mm-hmm. Feeders differ from FAs. Well, some FAs are attracted to big girls. Feeder gets turned on by making a thin girl fat or a big girl even bigger. Um, so that's, I mean, that's a real, it's not the worst definition of feeder that I've ever heard, but it's not necessarily yeah. one mm-hmm. that encapsulates what you want to say. So I'd say, you know, keep in mind that you're, you know, if you do decide to have a talk with someone after kind of working to, to create a space where you can have that talk, you know, just be aware that you run the risk of, you know, opening a Pandora's box of people trying to find out more about it on its own. So maybe point them to some resources that you think make sense Mm -hmm. um, in terms of helping them out because Lord knows we have seen, and we've talked about it before on this very (laughs) podcast, um, some of the depictions of of fetism out there, or probably as they'll find it as fetorism out there, you know, that really paint it in, in a negative light. And if, you know, honestly, if, if a lot, you know, if, if what I had to go on, was the internet depictions of, of fetism or the popular media depictions of fetism that are well, on the internet, uh, I might think my partner was a big old sick freak too. So, yeah. you know, um, <laughs> so you, you definitely want to kind of keep that in mind as you go through the process of, uh, you know, explaining the kink in a little bit more detail to your partner. Yeah, and maybe not just not just like resources as if you're giving them homework, but <laughs> y- y- why why don't why don't you share your porn with your significant others? Most people do that. Okay, maybe not most why people. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, I mean some people do that with regular porn, and why not do it with some like kinkier stuff? Sure. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely an option. Um, and it's you know, 
again, if, if you have a connection, I mean, for me anyway, seeing things that turn on my partner mm-hmm. is a turn on for me. For um, most people, I think that's the yeah, case. And, yeah. and, and, for, and for most people, I don't yeah. think that that's out of the question. Um, yeah. So, you know, is there a way that we could maybe, um, maybe distill this down to like a quick little checklist for someone who, who's wondering, you know, who says, all right, I like fat partners. Should I tell people? What should I tell them? And how should I do it? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, rewind the episode and just start. Uh, then yeah, then no, I'm sorry. Listen, yeah. <laughs> TL, DL, didn't okay. listen. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. Uh, why? Because you don't want to be a shitty person. Good answer. And it can actually help you in the long run. What totally depends on who you're going to talk to, but at least tell them the basics of being an FA. Sounds good, yeah. And how, step by step. There's no magic bullet that lets you reveal everything with minimal awkwardness. Um, And Lord knows there's been plenty of awkwardness in the way we've come out to people, you know, over the years. But hopefully this will serve as a roadmap. Um, and at least give you some food for thought in terms of your own personal <laughs> journey. Uh, yeah, yeah, not yet another food yeah, fun. Yeah. Um, but your own your own personal journey of you know becoming more public with it. I think one thing that TLC and I can both certainly attest to is that um, you know our our dating lives, our mental health, our sex lives, our personal lives are markedly better. Um, you know out with with this this part of our life out in the open uh than than they were with uh with it was cl- when it was closed uh, yeah. and and bottled up so uh the benefits are there um we're living proof hopefully <laughs> uh hopefully you'll you'll give a uh you'll give it a chance and mm-hmm. and kind of start being a little bit more public if you're you're not already um we'd love to hear from you too uh mm-hmm. you know if you are if you do did have an experience um you know kind of crossing over from that internalized preference to this this public um fat positivity and and fat admiration and possibly public even public fetus um ex, you know form of expression yeah. uh we'd love to hear from you of course mm-hmm. uh you can get get at us through the usual means of communication but before yeah. we get to that let's uh let's take a moment um some <laughs> of you in the past have mm-hmm. uh talked about supporting the podcast uh and just in response to that, we've created a Patreon. We're only going to use any funds we receive through the Patreon um, really to help the podcast itself if yep. we need to get better equipment, equipment and software and somehow kind of find stuff. fun day uh, com- comparison of, uh, I don't know, peanut butter taste test. Who knows? Um, <laughs> you know, we'll, 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 figure, we'll figure something else out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, we're not – clearly, we're not – we don't get rich off this uh, no. at all. By, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. So um, we did, however, receive our first uh, Patreon patron. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a and, and one of the one of the rewards we have is acknowledging them uh, on our podcast. So in Plumpin, yeah. Thank you very much. You may remember in Plumpin from season one of Hungry for More. Exactly. He was one of uh, one of the people who shared their origin stories in the second episode of the first season. So um, thank you so much. He's been around the community for a while. I've also uh, worked with him for The Hungry Magazine. He's an awesome guy. We wanted to give you a shout out for being our first Patreon and for supporting this. And it really means a lot to us. And we will yes. similarly sing your praises if you give us that filthy, filthy cash too. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, we, we definitely no. do want to hear from you. Of course, if you're watching on YouTube, you can leave us a comment um, mm-hmm. in the comment section. Exactly. Uh, you can send us send us messages. Um, we're on all the social media, all the Phoebe social media sites. Yeah. Um, I'm primarily, predominantly on Phoebe, uh, where you can find me as Pizza Wolf. Yeah, you can find me on Phoebe as well as Tender Loving Cares. I'm also on Tumblr as tenderlovingcares.tumblr.com. And of course, we have the website, which is hungrymagazine.com. You yeah. know this this was a this was a, a, a episode that. Um, in the course of making, we we stopped and started several times uh, to kind of work out some of the issues um, ourselves and in, in talking through. So you know, I, I before you know before you listen to it, you might I, I want to acknowledge that it's not the easiest topic in the community to yeah. you know, to discuss. So if you feel a little bit of hesitation, um, you know, when you approach this in your own life, uh, completely understandable. Just remember, uh, it is so 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 worth it. Yeah. I've never once regretted telling anyone. 
even if it might have been difficult or awkward or whatever. And even those people who are going to be shitty to you, those people probably shouldn't be in your life to begin with. So, Amen. Yeah. (laughs) Well, until next, (laughs) until next week. Yeah. See you next week. Bye. Bye bye. So long.